Hello everyone. This video is on the Newton Alta assignment for section 5.4 called Systems of Linear Equations and Problem Solving. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be going over a preview version of this assignment. So please understand that the questions I see in this video may not be the same questions that you see when you work on the assignment yourself. But the objectives are the same and the structure should be similar. So I'm hoping that watching me do these here helps you in some way when you work on the assignment on your own. Now on the assignment, assignment page you should be seeing the title, the mastery bar telling you how far along you've gotten, the objectives, Looks like there are four objectives for this assignment. Under the current objective, you should see a question related to that objective. And at the bottom of every question, you should have a feedback button where you can send feedback to Newton if you wish. There will not be an instructor cheat button. You will not have that. That's for instructors only. But you will have a more instruction button if you're struggling with a topic or a question, try clicking on this and you'll be taken to a page with some reading or videos to study and then you'll be given questions related to that instruction and completing those questions is another way to progress through the assignment. All right, so the first of the objectives I'm seeing is solve an application in geometry using a system of equations and really all these objectives in this assignment are similar. You have word problems. So remember how to deal with word problems. You read through the problem, you ask yourself, you know, what don't I know? What are they asking me for? You call those something, right? We're, now in these problems we're going to be setting up a system of equations, two equations with two variables. So the chances are every single one of these problems is going to have two unknowns that I'll call maybe X and Y or whatever you want, right? whatever letters you want to use. And then reading back through the problem, you're going to translate some sentences into equations. Right? And like I said, each of these you should be, end up, you end up setting up a system of two equations with two variables. All right, so in this first question, you know, Darren is hanging 200 feet of Christmas garland on the fencing that encloses his rectangular front yard. The length is five less, five feet less than five times the width. Find the length and width of the fencing and give measurements in decimal form. Right. So I'll draw a picture of the scenario. So Darren has this you know, rectangular front yard. All right, this is a rectangle. And, you know, he has garland that he's stringing around the entire rectangle. So the perimeter, all right, this is going to involve perimeter. And it says he had, you know, he has two, this 200 feet of garland, right? So the, basically the perimeter is 200 feet. All right, they said he's strung 200 feet of garland around this rectangle. Now the question is, you know, what are they, they want us to give us the length and width. So the unknowns here are the length, which I'll call L feet, and the width, which I will call W feet. So this is L feet, W feet. L feet, W feet going around the rectangle. All right, and then you know I've assigned my unknowns some letters what they want. Then we read back through it. Now again, one of the sentences was about, you know, the distance around this rectangle is 200 feet. So the equations, the system I'm going to set up is the following. Remember, perimeter is just the, the sum of the lengths of the sides. So that'd be 2L plus 2W 
must be equal to 200. All right, the lengths, the add all these up, two lengths and two widths should be 200 feet. There's one equation. Now the other equation comes from the statement, the length, right, so that was this first equation, and the other equation will come from this statement. They said the length is five feet less than five times the width. There's an equation here, right, because the word, there's a verb, to, the word is, right? So the left side, length, that's just L, the length is equals, and then this expression, right, five feet less than five times the width. Well, five times the width would be 5W, and then five feet less than that would be minus five. And here is our, you know, system of equations, and this should be happening for every single one of these problems in this assignment. You should end up setting up an, a system of two equations with two variables. And then we're asked to, you know, solve this system. And we have seen in sections 5.2 and 5.3 assignments how to solve a system using either the substitution method or the elimination method. You choose, right? You can solve by either substitution or elimination. You should end up with the same solution either way. So by either substitution or elimination. You choose. Well, based on the setup here, one equation is already solved for a variable, right? The second equation is already solved for L. So it would be very simple to do this by substitution. Right? So I'm going to choose to do this by substitution. So L is equal to, you know, 5W minus 5. So I'm going to substitute 5W minus 5 for L. I'll just put the word sub. I'm going to substitute that in for L in the first equation, right? The other equation. All right, then that equation becomes the following. You know, 2 times, and then instead of L, I'm replacing that with the quantity 5W minus 5. And then you have the rest of it, right? Plus 2W equals 200. And uh, now I can solve this for W. Right? Now I have one equation with, the, with just the variable W in it. Uh, distribute this 2 gives me 10w minus 10 plus 2w equals 200. And then I would add 10, and right, then we have 12w equals 210. And then we divide by 12, right? So w equals 210 divided by 12, which, you know, these have a common factor of um, actually, they have a common factor of 6. Uh, this would be 6 times 35, and 12 is 6 times 2. So this is equivalent to 35 halves. Right? Both have a common factor of 6. Uh, and then they asked, they asked us to write these in decimal form, right? 35 divided by 2 is 17.5, right? 17.5. And that was in feet, right? So the, the width, W, is, you know, 17.5 feet. And now that I have the width, I can go back to, again, any equation with L in it and find the length. Well... Here we have L already solved for, so I'm just going to go to that equation. L equals, you know, 5 times 17.5. Right, that was the width, and then minus 5. Um, so this ends up being right, L equals, now 5 times 17, 
that's 50 and 35 that's 85 5 times a half is 2 and a half so that's 87.5 Right, but then minus 5 would be 82.5 feet. So the length is now known. It's 82 and a half feet. And this is what they want us to enter, right? The length and width of this rectangle. And then don't forget to check it. You know, uh, if you multiply the width by 5, you know, that would be 87 and a half. Minus 5 would be the length. So that satisfies the second statement they had. And then if you take the, the perimeter, double this and double this, you know, double this would be 165, double this would be 35, add those up, you got 200. So these are the correct length and width based on the description. All right, but that's going to be, the, I think the hardest part for most people is setting up the equations. Right, you have to be able to translate an English sentence into mathematics, which is usually difficult for people, but hopefully with some practice and having seen translations and applications before, maybe this won't be so bad. All right, so the width, now pay attention, right? They got width and length. Pay attention that you're putting the correct number in the correct place. Width was 17.5 feet, length 82.5 feet. All right. Next. Oh, sorry. After you submit an answer, right, it'll tell you if you got it right or wrong, and then give you some sort of answer explanation. Please read through the answer explanations, right, just to make sure that you understand why something was correct or incorrect, and hopefully you can learn from your mistakes for the future. All right, so same objective. So we uh, we're going to have another. It looks like another recta rectangle here. All right, they might have rectangles or triangles or whatever. But you know, geometry will mean some sort of shape is involved. Uh, so here, another rectangle problem. The perimeter of a rectangular toddler play area is a hundred feet. So they're giving us the perimeter again, and then some relationship between the length and width. And then we asked, we're asked to find the length and width of this rectangular play area. The length is 10 feet more than three times the width. All right. All right, so this time, they just tell us, you know, we have a rectangle. Okay, so four sides. They're telling us the perimeter. And again, I'll call, I'll call the length once again, I'll call the length L and the width W. Right, you, for all of these, you should end up having two unknowns because we're setting up two equation, two variable systems. So they're telling us the perimeter of this thing is 100 feet. So that leads me to one equation. And I'll start the system. So twice the length plus twice the width, right, that's the perimeter of a rectangle, should be equal to 100. All right. All right, and then they told us the length of this rectangle is, so L equals 10 feet more than 3 times the width. Well, 3 times the width is 3 times w, and then 10 feet more than that would be plus 10. And here's your system. Solve this system. All right, so once again, I notice that, you know, one of the equations is already solved for one of the variables. The second equation is solved for L. So I'm going to do substitution again. And so this uh, L equals 3w plus 10. So I'm taking 3w plus 10 and substituting that for L in the first equation. So now that first equation becomes 2 times, you know, instead of L, I'm putting the quantity 3w plus 10. And then we have plus 2w equals 100. Distribute, then we'll solve this equation for w. All right, distributing the 2 gives me 6w plus 20 
then plus 2w equals 100. Left side we have 8w, and then subtracting 20, you got 80 on the other side, and then after dividing both sides by 8, w equals 10. Right? So the width of this rectangle is 10 feet, therefore the length must be 40. Right? The length would be 3 times the width, 3 times 10, and then plus 10, that's 30 plus 10, the length is 40 feet. And there are the dimensions, length 40 feet, width 10 feet. Again, pay attention to what's what, uh, width 10 feet, length 40 feet. And you can double check, make sure all the information they stated was is true for these numbers, and it is. Great. All right. All right, so now we're back to just you know solving this objective, solve a word problem using a system of equations. So this is the same concept, just without a rectangle or something. All right. So again, you read through the problem. You'll probably have two unknowns, two variables, right? Call them something, x and y or whatever, you know, l and w. Then you read back through and you should be able to set up two equations with those two variables and solve that system of equations. So here it says Shelley spent 10 minutes jogging and 20 minutes cycling and burned 300 calories. The next day she swapped times, right, did 20 minutes jogging 10 minutes cycling and burn the same number of calories. So how many calories were burned for each minute of jogging and how many for each minute of cycling? Right. So the variables here, the unknowns, is the number of calories per minute burned, right? Number of calories burned per minute per minute, can't spell, sorry, that's an N. Uh, cycling. I'll call that, you know, C for cycling. Cycling calories burn per minute. And the other unknown is the number of calories burned per minute jogging. And I'll call this J for jogging. And again, you can call them X and Y if you're more familiar and more comfortable with those. That's fine. Now I'm just going to read the sentences out loud and write the equations as we go. So the first sentence is, you know, 10 minutes jogging, 20 minutes cycling, burned a total of 300 calories. So 10 minutes jogging times the number of calories jogged per minute. This is the number of calories she burned jogging that first day. Add to that, you know, she did 20 minutes of cycling. So you take 20 minutes times, you know, C calories per minute. 20 times C, that's going to be the number of calories she burned cycling that day. And the total number of calories burned, 10J plus 20C, was equal to 300. I hope that makes sense, right? 10 calories, uh, J calories a minute times 10 minutes jogging. That's number of calories burned jogging. Plus... C calories per minute times 20 minutes. Minutes would cancel, and that gives you calories burned cycling. Total is 300. And then something very similar for the next day, right? She spent 20 minutes jogging. So 20 times J is the number of calories burned jogging. And 10 minutes cycling. So 10 times C, you know, that's the number of calories burned cycling. Also totaled 300. Right, also totaled 300, the same number of calories it said. So I hope you understand where these equations come from. Right? Again, reading back through the question. Right. Now, uh, this one's very, now this, notice how both of these are in standard form. You see how all the variables are on one side, the constants on the other. So this would be a lot easier to do using the elimination method 
you could still solve with the substitution method. You could solve one of the equations for one of the variables and substitute into the other equation. That's not a problem. But I think it would be more convenient to solve this with the elimination method. So uh, let's say I want to eliminate the C's. Now, again, I went over the elimination method in the section 5.3 video. So I'm not going to do that here. I'm not going to go over the entire method again. I'm just going to perform it. So say I want to eliminate C. Now you got positive 20C in the first equation. I could easily get the opposite, negative 20C in the second equation by multiplying both sides by, by negative 2. All right, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2. So that changes the system to the following. You have the first equation is 10j plus 20c equals 300. Didn't do anything to that one. I multiply both sides of the second equation by negative 2. So I have negative 40j minus 20c equals negative 600. Right? And now you see I have opposite coefficients for c. And then we do the sums. We add both sides. Right? If, two, if you have two equations, the sums of their sides should also be equal. All right, so I add up the left sides, I get negative 30j. Right, the c's would go away. They're opposites. You're adding opposites. That's 0. And then the other side, 300 plus negative 600 would be negative 300. And then dividing both sides by negative 30, I get j equals positive 10. And remember what j represents. That's the number of calories per minute burned while jogging. So this is 10 calories per minute. All right, Cal, let's put it like that, calories over minutes. So, so she burns 10 calories a minute jogging, and then I plug in uh, 10 for J in one of these equations with C in it and solve for C. And I'll just go to that second equation. So the second equation is 20 times j, so 20 times 10, plus 10 times c equals 300. And, you know, 20 times 10 is 200. I subtract 200, gives me 10c equals 100, and then dividing by 10, we get c equals 10 again. So both of them, both of them, the jogging and the cycling, burn 10 calories per minute. Now, since they asked how many calories per minute, you know, they just have the word calories afterwards, but it's implied that it's per minute, right? How many, how many for each minute of cycling, each minute of jogging. So 10 for both. She burns 10 calories in a minute jogging and 10 calories in a minute cycling. Wonderful. All right. Now they use lowercase j and lowercase c whatever, right? You can call them X and Y if you want. You just got to remember what means what. All right. So another word problem. So it's another thing about calories. Calories burned or whatever. So Drew burned 1,800 calories Friday by playing one hour of basketball and canoeing for two hours. On Saturday, he spent two hours playing basketball and three hours canoeing and burned 3,200 calories. So how many calories did he burn per hour when playing basketball? Now there are still two unknowns here. All right, it's still very similar to the last problem. You know, number of calories per hour I'll just say calories per hour like this. Right? This is calories burned per hour. Uh, playing basketball is what they're asking about. Uh, I'll call this B for basketball. And the other unknown, I know they're not asking for it, but there is another thing we don't know is how many calories per hour he burns canoeing. So that'll be my other variable. Right? The number of calories per hour burned uh, canoeing. And I'll call this, you know, C for canoeing. Again, you can call them X and Y, whatever you want, as long as they're different. 
Now on that first day on Friday, did one hour of basketball. So one hour times, you know, B calories per hour. That's the number of calories burned playing basketball. Add to that the number of calories burned canoeing. I right? did two hours of canoeing. So two hours times, you know, C calories per hour. That's the number of calories burned canoeing. And the total number of calories burned, right, there's some for Friday was 1,800. Now you don't have to have 1B, you can just write B, but it's still B plus 2C equals 1800. That's from Friday. And then on Saturday, spent two hours playing basketball. Right? So the number of calories burned playing basketball would be 2 times B. And three hours canoeing. So we add to that 3C, that would be the number of calories burned canoeing. And he burned on Saturday 3,200 calories. Right? So a total of 3,200. And here's a system of equations that I'm going to solve. And once again, it would be very easy to solve this for uh, using the elimination method. Using the elimination method. Now notice the question asks how many calories did he burn an hour playing basketball? So I want to just, you know, just so I don't have to solve the whole system, I just want to find B. So that means I'm, I should eliminate C. I should eliminate the C's from this system. Now the C's have coefficients of 2 and 3. You know, the least common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. So the first equation, you know, I'll make that 6C by multiplying by 3. All right, that'll, give, that'll give me 6C. And then to make the, the other equation have negative 6C, right, opposite coefficient, I'll multiply it by negative 2. Multiply both sides by negative 2. All right, so after doing both these multiplications, the system looks like this. First equation, I multiply both sides by 3. We have 3B plus 6C equals, and then 3 times 18 is 54, so it's 5400 on the other side. Right. Okay, and then I multiply the second equation by negative 2, so that'd be negative 4B and then minus 6c, right, there's your opposites, opposite coefficients for c, equals, and then negative 2 times positive 3200 would be negative 6400. Now that I have some opposite coefficients here, we're going to take their sums, we're going to add them, right, They're the sums of the sides should be equal. On the left side I'll just have negative b, and on the right side I'll have negative 1000. And so b is 1000 and that was calories per hour. Right? But they're, that's all they want. Right? They only want the one value. He burned a thousand calories an hour playing basketball. And if, and if you wanted the number of calories per hour canoeing, you would plug in a thousand for B and then you know, subtract a thousand, gives you 800, divide by two. You know, C would be 400 if you wanted to solve you know, calories per hour but they only wanted the basketball one. Right? They only wanted the basketball one. Okay, so back here, a thousand. He burns a thousand calories in an hour playing basketball. Great. Now let's see, do they actually go through and solve the... Yeah, see, they solve for C first and then plug it in, solve for B. It doesn't matter as long as you found B there, right? You found the basketball calories. That's all they asked for. All right, so this is a uniform motion application. Uh, you, we have seen motion problems. Remember, that's distance equals rate times time. I'm going to be using that equation. The distance one travels is equal to the rate of speed, how fast you're going, multiplied by the time, how, how long you travel for. So that equation will come into play. Now here we have a commercial jet can fly 868 miles in two hours with a tailwind. So that means the winds behind the jet and helping the jet, pushing the jet faster. Right? but only 792 miles in two hours into a headwind, right? Into the wind, you know, the wind is blowing against you, it's slowing you down.
right? With the wind, you're getting sped up by the wind. Into the wind, you're getting slowed down by the wind. Find the speed of the jet in still air, meaning if there was no wind, right? How fast would the jet be going if there were no wind? And we're, of course, assuming here that things move at constant speeds, that their speeds never change. That doesn't happen in real life, but like we're assuming for these problems, just to make them a little easier for you, we're going to be assuming that things are moving at a constant speed. So find the speed of the jet in still air and the speed of the wind, right? How fast is this wind blowing with it or against it on these trips? All right. So the two things that are unknown here, the speed of the jet in still air, meaning with no wind, right? That means no wind. So I'm going to call that J for jet, jet speed, right? And then the other thing that's unknown that they're asking us for is the speed of the wind. Right. Now, sometimes we go with the wind, sometimes we go against the wind, but this is, I'm going to call this W for wind speed. Now you can set a little table up like this. You don't have to do this. I just find it helps a lot of people when we're de dealing with uniform motion problems. Remember distance equals, you know, the rate of speed. Right, this is rate, uh, this is also, you could call this speed, times time. And make a little chart like this. Now, I don't usually write out the whole word. I usually just write DRT. And we're going to make a chart with each of these trips. All right, there was a trip into the wind, into the headwind. That was one trip they talked about making. And then with the tailwind, right, with the wind. So you have one with the wind, one against the wind. Now the distance should be in miles, right, I also like to point out the units. This should be in miles per hour and the time was in hours, right, based on all the stuff that was given to me in the problem. Alright, so reading back through, both trips took two hours. So I'm putting two in the column for time for both of these. The trip with the wind, with the tailwind, the jet flew a distance of 868 miles. 868 here. And then into the wind, you know, into the headwind, that was a, a distance of 792 miles. It's the speeds that are a little weird here. So, when, like I said, when you're traveling into the wind, you have the speed, the speed is the speed of the jet, J, but then minus the speed of the wind. Right? The wind is slowing you down. Whereas, it's the other way around, with the wind. When you're traveling with the wind, the speed being traveled is the speed of the jet, normally, with no air, and still air, and then plus the speed of the wind. Right? The wind speed is adding, making you faster. Right? It's coming from behind. And then using the fact that distance equals rate times time, this is where we get our system of equations. You know, 792 should be equal to two times the quantity j minus w. Right? It's the time times rate. Rate times time, same thing. And the same thing for the trip with the wind. You know, 868 should be equal to, you know, rate times time, time times rate, two times the quantity j plus w. Now, we could easily simplify this a bit by dividing both sides by two in both of these equations. So I'm going to write divided by two down here for both equations. First equation would become this. You'd have j minus w on one side, and then dividing by 2 is me uh, 396 on the other. And then same thing here with the, the trip with the wind. Dividing by 2 
uh, 434 on the other side, and then just J plus W over here. And now the equations boil down to this. All right, the difference in the speed of the jet and the wind should be 396 miles per hour. The sum of the speed of the jet and the wind should be 434 miles per hour. We have to solve for each of these. Now both of these equations are already in that standard form where you know the J's and W's are on one side, constants on the other. So I can easily solve this using the elimination method. Now you may already notice the coefficients of W are already opposites, negative one and positive one, so I can just take the sums right now. On the left side we have 2J, and on the right side we have uh, 830. Right, that means 10 there, boom, 13, yeah, 830. And then dividing both sides by 2, J is 415 miles per hour. Right, so the speed of the jet in still air, the speed of the jet without the wind is 415 miles an hour. And then I plug 415 back into here or here. Say I just do here and subtract, you know, subtract 415 from 434 and the speed of the wind is 19 miles per hour. All right, the sum of these is 434, the difference of these is 396. All right, but you're using distance equals rate times time in this concept to set up these equations. I think the, the difficult part here is remembering this, that with the wind, it, or, or, or you might even see like a current problem when you're on water going with the current or against the current, upstream, downstream. Um, you know, when you go with the wind or with the current, downstream, it's the speed of your object plus the speed of the wind or the speed of the current or the speed of the water. And then when you're going into the wind or upstream or against the wind, against the current, it's the speed of your object minus the speed of the water or the speed of the air. All right, so we got 415 for the jet in still air, 19 miles per hour for the wind. So 415 and 19. Great. All right, they use S and C instead of J and W. It doesn't matter as long as you know what the letters you put in represent. See, they're using rate times time equals distance, exactly the same formula. All right, so this one's just translate a word problem into a system of equations, which is what we've been doing. All right, so this is no different than that, but you now we're just filling in some blanks here. So uh, the sum of two numbers is negative 16. One number is seven times the other find the numbers. Well, if they call the first number m and the second number n, you know, the sum of two numbers is negative 16, that's m plus n equals negative 16. So that's going to fill in the blank there. And then the second statement is one number is seven times the other. m is m equals, you know, seven times n, seven n. Easy enough. And that's all we're asked to do for this. This this should probably be the easiest of the objectives for this assignment. Okay, great. All right, so next. All right, so back to the uniform motion problems. So again, distance equals speed times time or rate times time. And I'll set up that little table again if you want. All right. Um, so here, Marcus can drive his boat 36 miles down the river. All right, so this is exactly what I was talking about. Down the river means with the current, you know, like like with the wind. The current, the water, is making you go faster. 36 miles down the river in three hours, but takes four hours to return upstream. Up river, upstream means going against the water. So the water is slowing you down. Right? So we're asked to find the rate of the boat in still water, right? if there were no current, if it was a still water, just like no wind from the earlier problem. 
and the rate of the current, right? how fast is the water going in miles per hour. So very similar problem, really very similar problem. So again, the rate or the speed of the boat in still water, right, without the current, just on its own, I'll, I'll call this uh, B for boat speed, or X, or whatever you want. And then the rate or the speed of the current, right, the water, I'll call that C for current. Or you could call it W for water speed, whatever you want, right, as long as they're not the same letter twice. And then, uh, you know, distance equals rate times time. And a little table. And you don't have to make this table. And each row of the chart is about a different trip. Downstream, that means with the water, with the current. And then upstream, meaning against the current. So the speed downstream would be B plus C, right? You're getting faster, you, you know, the current's going with you, the boat plus the current, and the speed upstream would be B, uh, I said C, C, C. Sorry about that, B minus C, right? Because the current is slowing you down, it's the speed of the boat and then minus the speed of the water when you're going upstream. Uh, the time to go the time it took to go down river was three hours. The time it took to go up river was four hours. Then the distance both ways was 36 miles, right? Because it was it went 36 miles downstream and then made a return trip, so it was the same distance both times. Now the equations from this, you know, again, time times rate. 36 times the quantity b plus c should be equal to distance. Should be equal to 36. And same thing here. 4 times the quantity B minus C should be equal to 36. And then I could very easily simplify these. Just divide both sides by 3 in the first equation. We have B plus C equals 12. And then divide both sides by 4 in the second equation. We have B minus C equals 9. And then this is a one I can very easily solve with the elimination method. All right, just add the equations right now, take their sums. We have 2b on the left, you know, because the coefficients of c are already opposites, 1 and negative 1. And then 12 and 9 is uh, 21 on the right. And uh, dividing by 2, b equals 10.5 miles per hour. Right? So the speed of the boat, 21 divided by 2, 10.5. Uh, the speed of the boat is ten and a half miles an hour. And remember, the sum of the speed of the boat and the current should be 12. So the speed of the current is 1.5 miles per hour. Right, just plug in 10.5 for B and then subtract 10.5 from 12. You got 1.5 for the speed of the current. All right. So speed of the boat in still water, 10.5 miles per hour. Speed of the water, speed of the current, 1.5 miles per hour. Great. All right, uh, next. So again, another one of the, I think, again, I think this will be easier. These just translate, fill in the blanks. So here the sum of two numbers is negative 32, so m plus n. Now, if they're calling those the two numbers, is negative 32. One number is two less than the other. So m equals n minus 2, right? m is n, but two less, right? So n minus 2. So I'm filling in those blanks, submit, the end. All right, they're not even asking us to solve the system, just translate into a system. All right, so one more of these. So, you know, Henry, or Henri, has $24,000 invested in stocks and bonds. The amount in stocks is 6000 more than three times the amount in bonds. 
So call the amount that Henri invested in stocks S and the amount he invested in bonds B. Well, the total is 24000 right? Stocks plus bonds should be $24,000. So that's going to go in this first blank. And then the amount in stocks, S, equals 6000 more than 3 times the amount in bonds. So if I do 3 times B and add 6000 that's the number in stocks. So I'm filling in the blanks with 3 and 6000 there. 3B plus 6000 Yeah, the, these should be simple relative to the other problems from this assignment. And then I just got one more of these. So yeah, very similar to the stocks and bonds one, right? Jorge has invested $28,000 in two accounts. The amount he put in his money market account was $2,000 less than twice what he put into a CD. So call the amount Jorge invested in the CD D and the amount he invested in the money market M. So the total D plus M, right, should be the 28,000 he invested. So 28,000 in this first blank. And the amount in the money market, M, is 2,000 less than twice the CD. So twice the CD is 2 times D, and then 2,000 less would be minus 2,000. So I'm filling in those blanks with 2 and 2,000. Right, pretty simple there. Right, that, that should definitely be the easiest of the four objectives. Because you're not even asked to then solve the system. So now back to solving a word problem. So here Troy and Lisa were shopping for school supplies. Each purchased different quantities of the same notebook and thumb drive. So we have no notebooks and thumb drives. We don't know how many of each they bought. All right. Well, we don't know their cost, actually. Troy bought four notebooks and five thumb drives for $116. Lisa bought two notebooks and three thumb drives for $68. Find the cost of each notebook and each thumb drive. So how much is one notebook? How much is one thumb drive? All right. All right, so again, I'll write the variables, right? We need, you know, the, the cost, right, we don't know the cost of a notebook. I'll call that N dollars. Right, it costs N dollars for one notebook. And the other thing we want to know is what's the cost of a thumb drive? So I'll, I'll call that T for, you know, T dollars, thumb drive. Now Troy bought four notebooks, so four times N. That's how, mu how much he paid for notebooks. You know, it's N dollars per notebook. He bought four of them, four times N. Add to that the five thumb drives, 5T, he bought, and that's a total of $116. So there's the first equation I'm getting. Four, four notebooks and five thumb drives cost or equals 116. Lisa bought two notebooks, so 2N, and three thumb, thumb drives, so plus 3T, for a total of $68. And we're asked to you know, find N and T here. How much does one notebook cost? How much does one thumb drive cost? So again, I can do elimination pretty easily here. If I multiply the second equation by negative 2, that'll give me negative 4N, and then I got positive 4N in the first equation already. All right, so I'm just going to do this, rewrite it here. Negative 4N minus 6T equals... 120 plus 16, 136, negative 136. Now it's that equation. And then I'll take the sums of both sides now, because they have you know 4n and negative 4n, those add up to nothing. 5t plus negative 6t is negative 1t. And then 116 plus negative 136 would be negative 20. So t equals 20, and that is dollars, right? T represents the cost of a thumb drive. All right, so one thumb drive at this place cost $20. That's quite a, quite a price. But uh, and then I solve, you know, plug plug this 20 in for T, and we have four. And I'll do it in the first equation. Four times n plus five times 20 should be equal to 116. 
So that's 4n equals 16, right? This is 5 times 20 is 100. I would subtract 100. And then dividing by 4 gives me $4, right? n equals 4. So a notebook is $4, and a thumb drive is $20 at this particular store. So notebook, 4. Mm, do we have to put the dollar sign? didn't say. All right, you know what? I'm not going to put it and see what happens. Thumb drive 20. Let's see if they ask for the dollar sign. Right, good. Okay, so we didn't have to put the dollar sign. Usually we don't, right? You've probably noticed that in most of these, they don't ask you to put the units in. Great. All right, next. All right, so looks like one more of these word problems. So this is about Oh my gosh, this is basically the same as earlier with the canoe, you know, basketball and canoeing. A very popular combination of sports, of course. Um, so Jason burned 1,400 calories Friday by playing one hour of basketball and canoeing for two hours. On Saturday, he spent two hours playing basketball and three hours canoeing and burned 2,500 calories. How many calories did he burn per hour when playing basketball? Right, so this is very, very similar to the problem earlier with the canoeing and the basketball. All right, so I'm just going to use letters and tell you what they mean. I'm not going to write them out. So Friday, one hour playing basketball. That's B calories per hour for one hour. That's one B. Uh, I'll call B the calories play, playing basketball per hour. Right? Canoeing for two hours, so two times C. C is going to be the number of calories burned canoeing per hour. And the total number of calories burned on Friday was 1,400. Right, so there's one equation of the system. Then on Saturday, he spent two hours playing basketball. So the 2 times B would be the number of calories burned playing basketball. Add to that three hours canoeing, so 3 times C for the number of calories burned canoeing. And he burned you know, a total of 2,500 calories Saturday. Now we're trying to find B. All right. They want us to find the number of calories burned in an hour playing basketball. So I want to find B. So let's just eliminate C then. Now you could eliminate B first and then solve for C and then go back and solve for B. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just want to get B right away. So I'm going to eliminate C's. All right. So uh, I'm going to multiply the first equation by 3. That will give me 6C. And the second equation by negative 2. That will give me negative 6c, and then I'll have opposite coefficients for c. Alright, so uh, the first equation, everything by 3. 3b plus 6c equals, and then 3 times 14 is uh, 30, 42, so 4200. And then the second equation by negative 2, so negative 4b minus 6c equals negative 5000. Add them up. This is negative b on the left, and then negative 800 on the right. So b is 800, you know, calories per hour. But that's what they want, right? They want how many calories did he burn in an hour then, playing basketball? 800. Now, if you want the value of c, you know, for some reason, you plug 800 in for b, say in this first equation, subtract 800. You got 2c equals 600 divided by 2. C would be 300 calories per hour. So he's burning 300 calories an hour canoeing, but they wanted the basketball, right? 800 calories per hour. So in one hour, burns 800 calories playing basketball. Great. All right. Then we've got... Another geometry thing. It's another rectangle. So Becca is stringing a 28-foot floral garland along the two sides and top of a rectangular pergola to prepare for a wedding. The height of the pergola is four feet less than the width. Find the height and the width. Now be careful with this one. So they're putting garland along two sides and top of the rectangular pergola. So there's no bottom. You're not doing the entire perimeter. So let me draw a picture of this. So 
So like here's the floor, and then you have this pergola, and they said it's rectangular. So you got two sides in the top. So like you know she's putting this flowery stuff, the flower garland, just along these two sides, and the top almost almost like making kind of like a little arch, but it's not an arch, you know, it's not rounded, but this is what's happening. No flowers on the floor. So this is H, I'll call H the height, you know, the height of the pergola. So H feet there, H feet there, and then they say they also want the width, right? I'll call W the width, and that's, that's across the top there, the width across the top. Now they're telling us this is 28 feet of, of floral garland, so 2H plus W is 28. Right. Not notice I didn't use 2W. Again, there's no flower on the floor. So it's a little trickier this one. Right, then the second statement was the height of the pergola is four feet less than the width. So the height of the pergola is four feet less than the width. That's H equals W minus four. And then I solved this system. Right. So I'm going to do substitution here. All right, we have h equals w minus 4 in the second equation. I'll substitute that into the first equation. So the first equation becomes 2 times, you know, instead of h, the quantity w minus 4. And then we have plus w equals 28. Distributing the 2, we have 2w minus 8 plus w equals 28. This is 3w. 3w equals, and then adding 8 to both sides gives me 36 and then dividing by 3, w equals 12. All right, so the width across is 12 feet, meaning, you know, put 12 in for w here or 12 in for w here. h is 4 less than that, so these are 8 feet, 12 minus 4. So the height's 8 feet, and the width is 12 feet, and that's what they asked us for. Now, they notice they put find the height and width. I don't think it matters what goes where. They don't have the word height or width here. So, but I'll put them in the order they stated them, height first, then width second. The height was 8 feet, the width 12 feet. Right. Again, that one's a little trickier because of the fact you're not doing all four sides of the rectangle, right, just three of the sides. So, again, pay attention, read the instructions carefully, read your problem carefully. All right, so one more of these geometry problems now. Here's a word I want to talk about, supplementary angles. You'll see maybe supplementary or complementary right, when talking about two angles. So some definitions here before I go into the problem. Uh, two angles are complementary if their sum is 90 degrees, or uh, pi over 2 radians, if you know what a radian is. But if their sum is 90 degrees, if they add up to a 90 degree angle, then those two angles are called complementary. Two angles are called supplementary that's a y, sorry. Two angles are called supplementary if their sum is 180 degrees, if you put them together and they form a straight angle, or pi radians, if you know what a radian is. So in this problem, we see the word supplementary. All right, so I'm going to go back to this. So the difference of two supplementary angles is 24 degrees. Find the measures of these angles. So I'll say first angle. Let's call that x degrees and second angle. Let's call that y degrees, right? x and y. Now we are told, you know, they're supplementary. So that's one equation. x plus y needs to be 180 degrees. We're also told that the difference in these two angles is 24 degrees. So the difference in the two angles, x minus y, 
is 24 degrees and we're just assuming here that X is the larger angle. Well I can already I can solve this using the elimination method very quickly. I can just take their sums right now. You know, we have positive y, negative y, we already have coefficients that are opposites on the y, so when we add these up on the left we have 2x. Add them up on the right, you have 204. Divide both sides by 2. X equals um, 102 degrees. So then Y must be 78 degrees, right? Because they need to add up to 180. So 102 degrees and 78 degrees. Now they already have the degree symbols there. They already have the degree symbols there, so I'm just entering the numbers, right? 102 degrees for one of them and uh, 72 degrees for the other, right? No, I said 78, not 72. I wrote 70, it's 78. My apologies. Yeah, you should see these add up to 180, and it says their difference is 24. I wrote 78, but for some reason I wrote 72 here. It should be 78. Right, 102 and 78. And make sure they add up to 180, and their difference is 24. Excellent. Okay. Um, and I should have just a couple more of these uniform motion problems. So remember, downriver means with the water, you're sped up. Upstream or up the river means you're against the water, you're slowed down. Right. So Marcus can drive his boat 24 miles down the river in two hours, but takes three hours to return that 24 miles upstream. Find the rate of the boat in still water and the rate of the current. All right, so this is very, very similar to a problem earlier. All right, this one I'm not going to write a table for. Just remember that distance equals rate times time. And I'll say boat, B is the speed of the boat in still water, C is the speed of the current. All right. And we have uh, two hours times, now this is for the downstream, so boat plus speed of the current, right? The speed of the boat plus the speed of the current. Two hours times B plus C equals the 24 miles. In other words, B plus C must be 12. And then for up current or upstream, it takes three hours. So three times, and then going upstream, the speed is the speed of the boat minus the speed of the current. And again, that, that's the 24 miles, right? Time times rate equals distance. Dividing both sides by three gives me B minus C equals eight. Then I can take their sums here, right? They already have plus C minus C. So that's two B on the left, 20 on the right. The speed of the boat is 10, and the speed of the current is 2. Mile, no, these are miles per hour. Because, you know, ten, uh, they have to add up to 12 or have a difference of 8. So, boat in still water, 10 miles an hour. And the speed of the water, the speed of the current, 2 miles an hour. Right? Again, very similar to a problem I saw earlier. And I should have just one more like this, either with the wind or against the wind or with the water or against the water problems. Yeah, so this is, now remember, with the wind is you're sped up. You add the speeds, the speed of the plane and the speed of the wind. Into the wind or against the wind is you subtract, you know, it's speed of the plane minus the speed of the wind. So again, jet speed in still air and speed of the wind. Uh, so a small jet can fly 1,072 miles in four hours with the wind, but only 848 miles in four hours against the wind or into the wind. All right. So very, very similar to the last problem. Right. So again, uh, let's say J is jet speed with no wind and W is wind speed. So it takes, you know, with the wind, four hours, four times J plus W, right, speed with the wind, is equal to the distance traveled there with the wind was 1,072 miles. Now again, I can very simp easily simplify this. Divide both sides by four, that's J plus W equals, uh, four goes into 10 twice, two left over, four goes into 27, six times, yeah, 24, then 32, eight times. So J plus W equals 268, and then against the wind or into the headwind, right, that's a four-hour trip as well. 
but the speed there is the speed of the jet minus the wind, right? You're going into the wind. And the distance traveled in that four hours is only 848 miles. And then dividing both sides of this by four gives me J minus W equals uh, 212. And then you can see I can add both sides, take the sums. You got 2J on the left equals 480 on the right. And divide by 2, J equals 240 miles an hour. All right, there's the speed of the jet. And the speed of the wind then, you know, the sum of them must be 268. So subtract 240 from 268, that's 28 miles per hour for the speed of the wind, right? And there you go. Very, again, very, very similar to a problem I saw earlier. I'm not going to go into too, uh, write, writing too much for this. So 240 for the speed of the jet in still air and 28 miles per hour for the speed of the wind. Wonderful. All right, so a lot of, a lot of similar things happen in here, right? Solving word problems, read through the problem, assign your two unknowns, and read back through it again and, you know, Use the information from the problem, translate it into math, set up two equations, a system of two equations with two variables, and you solve those systems with either elimination or substitution, and of course check your answer. And that should be it for this preview version of this assignment. Like I said at the top of the video, you know, the questions I saw here may not be the same as the questions you see when you work on it on your own. But, you know, the objectives are all the same. The questions, the structure should be similar. So I'm hoping that watching me do these here helps you out in some way when you work on it on your own. And thank you very much for watching.